Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining me in another AppScan Tuesday session. This is number 15th in our shows, and it's amazing that we got so long uh, running this for, well, four months now. Today, we are going to talk about AppScan Source and how you can automate static analysis scans with it. I'll have with me the product manager for our AppScan Source in our SaaS area, Florin Quada from my team. And we are going to review how to use the on-prem tool, the AppScan Source for this. So with no further ado, hi, Florin. Hey, Tom, nice to be back. It only took, uh, what, 14 sessions to be back for the uh, anniversary of our teenager series at this point? Yeah, indeed, you were in the first one. You were in the one in the middle when we launched V1001, and now you're back again. Completely forgot about the one in the middle. Yeah, and it's not just because, you know, it's not that I couldn't recruit other guests. We had some really interesting topics that we wanted to discuss, something that came from actually from customers. And I'm sorry for the background noise from the dogs, if you guys hear it. Um, before we jump in, so can you tell us a little bit more about AppScan Source? Peter did a session about AppScan Source once. Uh, I know that we did a lot of sessions on AppScan on cloud. Help us here understand what is AppScan Source and how is it different? Absolutely. So AppScan Source is our on-premise SaaS solution. Uh, it's where everything started for AppScan from a static analysis point of view. And it's something that a lot of our SaaS customers are very familiar with at this point. Uh, it provides power tools for people that look to do code reviews, not just automated scanning, mm -hmm. but also provides you with the option to do automation. I think because AppScan Source has been in the market for a long time, it has seen the transition from manual code reviews into more automated CI/CD pipeline type scanning. And uh, today, I guess we're going to cover some of that area, how we automate AppScan Source. Yeah, before we jump into that, I mean, in version 10, we did a lot of changes. We made a lot of change in AppScan Source. Maybe you can yep. touch a few of those, the highlights. Uh, well, oh, how, let's see how my memory goes. But uh, when we started with version 10, we brought in a, uh, a unified engine, a common engine between the cloud and the on-premise solution. And we did that because there's a lot of great features in that engine that work really well for automation and for manual code reviews. Uh, the first item that comes on that list is the automated or machine learning algorithms we have around uh, filtering results and triaging, which we call the IFA or Intelligent Finding Analyzer, which acts mm -hmm. as an initial reviewer on your results. If you have thousands of results, we'll look through them and we'll come back and say, hey, here's the bucket that we think looks really interesting. Start with those. And we also brought in something that sits a bit more behind the scenes the ICA, the Intelligent Code Analyzer, which improves the coverage in your scans. It looks through APIs, new code you develop, and starts including those into scans a lot better than, uh, than it did before. And it does so using some uh, machine learning algorithms that uh, one of our engineers spent time developing in the cloud. And these two are really important. I mean, we validate them for two, three years, I think, on the cloud, on hundreds and thousands of applications to see on real life applications to see the value and many customers were waiting. Did you get feedback from customers on V10? What are they thought, their thoughts about it, the on-prem customers? Yeah, we definitely got some good feedback from it. I think everyone was excited to have this initial triage done for them. It was the main benefit specifically for automation. Mm -hmm. You don't have to look at all the results. And we see a lot of people starting with automation and just give them a boost, I would say, in terms of starting making decisions. Hey, what do I fix first? And let's focus on remediating stuff, getting rid of those issues instead of getting through those, hey, I just need to scan again. So it's quite nice to see that. Uh, I didn't mention it, but we did add some languages in there. And since we added a few more features that the people found useful, and we got uh, overall some good feedback on it. And we're continuing to add more things to it. Cool. So talking about automation, as you mentioned, we want to automate. We could automate before people were running scans. All the goal about automation is actually fixing and getting more secured. And this is what we are going to touch today a bit. Um, what are you going to show us? Uh, well, I want to say that is mostly what people are after. Uh, fixing is kind of the end goal here. 
But uh, what we're going to look at today is uh, how you can easily automate something with Maven. We see a lot of our customers doing that. They use Maven and uh, AppScan source for automation. And just want mm -hmm. to quickly go over a short demo of that. Just show people how easy it is to get started with, uh, with automation in our on-premise product and, and see if we have any, uh, any time to spend on other stuff. Cool. I would so, say. Um, you have the floor. Thank you very much. So let me start sharing, which is always a tricky one, if I remember where the button is. Well, pre pre pressure, definitely pressure. Awesome. So what we have here is our Maven application. It's AlturaJ. I think everyone's been uh, scanning AlturaJ a few times so far, except that one guy some weeks back that decided to, uh, to scan something else with some multi-step operations. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'll, uh, I'll simply enter the PowerShell and I'm going to start using Maven. The first step in working with the automation is creating a scan configuration. And because we use Maven, that's really, really easy to do and achieve. So all I have to do is I uh, do my lovely Maven, and then I run with my uh, ounce goals. For those of you wondering where ounce comes from, it's the name of the original SaaS tool that transformed the apps and source. And now, as soon as I uh, run this command, it will go through my Maven project. It will build the configuration for me. And now, all of a sudden, I am ready to, uh, to scan something. It's important to note the two outcomes of this command. First off is this uh, alterj.paf. This is my uh, project application file. I can work with this. And the PPF, which is the uh, subset of the PAF, is just a definition for a specific project. So what I can do now is I can uh, go into the apps can source CLI. And I can leverage this to scan my application. So I'm going to run a quick login here. Hey, Florent, can you make the font size a little bit larger so we can see what the changes that you're making? Absolutely. Let's see how we do that. Uh, cursor size large. I'm hoping that will increase the text size. I am not good with PowerShell. Let's see. Where do we get yep. the option? Font. It Make it bigger. Thank you. Much better. So hopefully everyone watching on uh, small phones will be able to see us. So the first command we did was logging into our solution. Then we'll simply open the application we want to scan. If you remember the PAF file, that is what it's asking us for here. And now I'm ready to scan. At this point, you can specify any desired scan configuration. If you have your own custom configs, you can leverage those. I just want to go ahead with the default for this purpose and this demo. And now it's all ready to go. Identify the project. It's picking up all the good stuff for scanning. And now it's getting into the uh, scan phase. Uh, it's interesting to see some of the uh, things being printed out here. For those of you that have keen eyes, you might notice some words such as staging and uh, processing files. These are some of the cool things that we are bringing from the cloud on-premise. Some that we call the uh, the stager and the slicer, things that allow us to uh, to speed our scans. So if you're doing Java and you're looking to uh, speed up things, definitely reach out. We want to uh, try some things out together. But at this point, my scan is done, and uh, I have my results. One of the interesting things now is that uh, I can see all the different values I have available for my highs, mediums, and lows. And without having to do anything special, the IFA and the ICA ran in the background, making sure that first off, ICA provides me with coverage and then IFA provides me with a very focused set of results. 
Now, as so you're... Where are the oh, reports? How do I see the reports? Uh, very good point. So the results are going to be available for me wherever I run the scan from. So I can open them from my OZASMT file with any app scan client. Okay. And I can review the results in here. I can pass this to a developer and I can work with them myself. Uh, the one thing I would do, however, before uh, worrying too much about it, what's in the results, uh, have a little plugin for a feature we added in AppScan 10.01, which is the AppScan Delta. So if you're doing this in automation and you're running the scan at every single step, every single build you're doing, you can run AppScan Delta and that can allow you to do a quick comparison between two scans and give you back some, uh, some results. Uh, but before I even go further with that, I think uh, I just want to mention that a lot of this can be done with a simple command line. A lot of the commands I've been running here can be put into a script file. The only thing you'd have, have the only thing you would have to do in your automation is run the Maven command to generate the configurations, and then you can go with the AppScan CLI. Issue the script command. Is a script you defined before, and that will do everything for you. Now, for me, the automation script is here, and all it does it runs the same command I ran manually. So when you go into automation, you can run everything at once. So if I enable this one to run, and we hope this didn't and confuse I think my it's uh, command what line. What you're showing here, and I'm happy that you're not showing just the out of the box plugins. Just last week, I spoke with a very large customer of ours that, that in, the, in this case is using the on-prem. And I asked them if they're interested in some out-of-the-box plugins and which tools that they're using. And the response showed me how mature they are. They have a very large number of different application development teams. And they know that there is no unified tool used across their, their, their teams. So, what they were looking to actually is, is the set of APIs and command lines and, and whatnot to allow them to configure those settings, knowing that just the out-of-the-box plugins, even if they are open sourced, will not give them the value. Um, but in many cases, we do provide the out-of-the-box plugins for customers who, who need it. I, I do like when people embrace the, I don't want to say the DIY, approach, but when people customize tools to manage their environments, and that's why in AppScan we have CLIs you can leverage, and the cloud has a bunch of different SDKs and CLIs and APIs as well. To put this into whatever tool set and whatever model you're working with, rather than focusing you into a specific use case, you're master over your own yeah. pipeline, so you can do whatever you want with it. So all we're seeing here is the exact same thing, but instead of running the entire script set, I just issue a command that will put the uh, script as a parameter, and then it did everything for me. And you can easily see how this can be put into something like Jenkins, Bamboo, or whatever other build tool you are using. Yeah, it looks good. Thanks for showing this, definitely. Well, let's see if this time will go better than last time and I'm able to uh, show my face faster than I show the screen. Yeah, all good. So first of all, thanks for showing this. Um, it helps. I know that many of our on-prem customers felt really um, good about the V10 release, but had a few questions about automation and all the good stuff that we are showing on the cloud all the time. So, hey, this is for you guys. Um, everything that you have, guys and girls, um, for that are using our on-prem tools. Another thing that I wanted to check with you, Florin, and um, you know, just a tease: we are releasing a new version in a month from now for the AppScan source. Anything that you want to share about that? Am I allowed to say anything about you that? You are allowed to say uh, everything uh, that you're committing to... to delivering. Yeah, and if not, you can put a small asterisk next to it. Uh, we are looking to add some uh, some languages. So we're bringing Ruby, and we're making some uh, adjustments to our uh, PHP scanner with some support for Symfony, and see if we have time to do anything for TypeScript and Angular. We're also making some changes with uh, how we're using AppScan Source on-premise from an architectural point of view. 
a lot of our users will be familiar with something known as SolidDB mm -hmm. or Oracle, which was traditionally used to store a lot of the information about the scans and configurations and results. And we're now replacing those with a single point of uh, storing all this information across AppScan, which is going to be powered by AppScan Enterprise. So for those of you who are using AppScan Enterprise as part of your deployments, you'll be able to leverage that and maintain a single database, not having to worry about different components. Just keep everything smooth in a single place for you to, uh, to handle with. We're also bringing you the opportunity of storing the assessments in there, which we know some of you are quite excited about. So fingers crossed, we're going to get your good feedback about 1002 as well. So if I may use the terms of our friends from the application paranoia podcast, Chris, quality of life stuff we are adding here. It, definitely. Is, it is quality of life, definitely. We want to make it easier for people to use the product. We want to make it more accessible and not mm -hmm. user friendly. And uh, <laughs> it is user friendly and accessible. Well, I just, yeah. Well, as much as software can have feelings, it is user friendly. But yes. Okay, before we wrap up, um, just the email that I saw earlier today from Matt. Um, new stuff on ASOC. Do you want to share? It's on your side. Oh, more stuff on my side. Yes, we are uh, publishing updates to uh, include a new scanner for TypeScript. So for those of you using TypeScript, our cloud solution is getting that. Uh, support for Angular 8 and 9 and Ionic Framework at the same time. Great. And, and fingers crossed, soon enough, CodeSweep as well gets those scanners to, yeah, uh, we to just, allow developers. Yeah, we just crossed the 2,000 developers this uh, weekend. And I'm, I'm really Yeah, I'm really excited because it's, it's a tool that you know, it really is a bottoms up. People hear about it, they try it, and, and they scan, you know, what, tens of thousands of fa files every week, right? I don't have yeah, the... The numbers are, are quite interesting when you, uh, when you see how much is being used. And uh, we just hope that uh, they keep growing and developers keep doing more, what I would like to say, hands-on learning with, with our tool. Educate yeah. themselves on uh, what questions they should ask and what's the right thing to do. All good stuff. Thanks, Lauren. It was great having you again in the show. Uh, I Happy know to be will, back. I know we will do that more. Um, thanks for the explanation. If anyone has any question on what you saw today, please reach out to us, uh, to myself, to Florin. You can find us over LinkedIn if you, have, if you don't have our direct emails already. Uh, any questions, uh, any topics that you want to show, uh, want us to show, or that you, if you want to be on, a guest on the show, please reach out. Um, have a happy Tuesday next week. By the way, Florin, we have Neil Almog on the show, um, the dev manager okay. for ASOC for our cloud solution. Finally, well, I got I'm, him to join. Um, I'm definitely excited to uh, to join that one from the other side of the screen. So, uh, yeah. well, yeah. good luck to Neil. Make his make your questions ready available for him. Thanks, I everyone. Will. Bye bye.